We're going to take this lesson to quickly follow up on the practice we did in class today. That practice was on solving multi-step equations. And we should all be familiar with multi-step equations by now because we've spent most of the year solving them. And we've established a pretty clear process, SIS. And remember, the first S stands for simplify. And that means either the distributive property. And if you have to write out distributive property because you don't remember DP stands for that, I'll tell you what, I'm actually going to do that. It means either the distributive property or combining like terms. And remember, we have to do simplifying in that order because just the distributed property is multiplying and combining like terms is adding. An order of operations would make us to follow that order anyways. The I, don't forget, stands for isolate. And that's that key process of using either adding or subtracting to move terms to go join like terms on the other side of the equation. And that's going to hold true also with inequalities. And the last step is to solve. And usually that's going to be done, as we know, with inverse operations. Okay? So everything that we did with practicing solving multi-step equations on the handout in class today is going to be directly applicable, is going to apply directly to solving multi-step inequalities. Now, don't forget, there's a couple of other things we don't want to be sloppy about. So remember the rule for switching the inequality symbol. Remember the rule for switching the inequality symbol. And that says when multiplying or dividing by a negative number. By a negative number. We know to switch or flip. Maybe we should say flip the inequality symbol, okay? Instead of switching, flip the inequality symbol. And separate from that, is if we have a backwards solution, remember to flip the entire solution around because we want, want the variable on the left side. So don't forget that, okay? So those two are also steps that we've already established with solving the one-step inequalities that they're going to hold true for any type of inequality. So there's two problems that look a little bit different than what you came across today, or actually one of these looks familiar to one of the equations that you solved today, but this one we didn't see any practice of. So let's get started. We want to go through this process. Is there any simplifying to do? Is there any need, is there any need to do any distributing or combining like terms, either on the left-hand side or the right-hand side? And the answer to that is no. But this is that kind of unique situation where we have a variable term and a constant to one side of no longer an equal sign, to one side of our inequality, and a variable and a constant on the other. So we want to start moving some pieces around. So let's see. What we can do is to start to isolate. To isolate, we can do any number of moves, but generally speaking, we talk about moving the variable term with the lowest value. So I have a variable term of negative 7x. I have a variable term of 4x. The one that's lower in value is the negative 7x. So we'll add that to both sides. Whoops, that says plus 4x. I'm jumping ahead of myself. So plus 7x and plus 7x. My 7x cancels, I get 8 is less than or equal to 52 plus 11x. 
is still more isolating to do, as you can see, because I have a constant now isolated fully, but a constant living with the variable term on the other side. So this now is just graduated to a two-step inequality. So we will subtract the 52 on both sides. And that's going to give me negative 44 is equal to 11x. At this point, we're fully isolated. My variable term, 11x, whoops, you can see I'm, I'm, I'm flipping into an equation by mistake. Negative 44 is less than or equal to 11x. But what I was saying is our variable term is now fully isolated from our constant term. So the last thing I just need to do is to solve. And that's a quick step of dividing by 11. And I will get negative 4 is less than or equal to x. But we don't like that because we have a backward solution. So we want x on the left side. So do a complete 180 degree turn and state your final answer as x is greater than or equal to negative 4. And then just graph. 0, negative 4. Close your dot at negative 4 and graph to the right because that's the way our inequality symbol is now pointing where I have the variable on the correct side. So your final answer and graph is right there. Okay, so next example is a little more peculiar. So we want to actually do something that helps us get a clearer picture of what's going on. In my numerator of x plus 2, I'm going to wrap that in parentheses because if I think about order of operations now, before I can undo the parentheses, I'm going to have to undo the division. Don't forget that fraction bar is division. So I will actually start by multiplying both sides by 2. I'll multiply by 2 here and here. And my 2's will cancel out. And what I will be left with is the x plus 6 of my numerator is greater than negative 14. And this actually turned out to be, after we took care of that step of multiplying to get rid of that denominator, this actually turns into a straightforward inequality because our last step is going to be to subtract 6. And that's going to give us x is greater than negative 20. So x is greater than negative 20. Our solution is in the right order. The variable is on the correct side. There was no need to turn it around. There's no need to multiply or divide by a negative. So there's no need to turn the inequality symbol in. So I'm just ready to go ahead and graph. Put the negative 20 to the left of 0 on our number line. Draw an open dot. And again, graph to the right. Draw an open dot. I had to go back and fix that other graph and graph to the right. And there's our final solution. So, between the practice of solving equations worksheet you did in class today to, revi to remind you of simplify, isolate, solve, and just with a quick reminder of when you need to flip the inequality symbol and when you need to turn the entire solution around, you should be in a good spot to go ahead and solve the six problems that are on the worksheet that we handed out in class today. So practice those. We'll come back to class tomorrow and discuss further.